ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for a very special one-to-one -one scale life-size prop replica unboxing and review video. Today, if you haven't already guessed it, we're taking a look at none other than the Sideshow Collectibles in partnership with Legacy FX. The child. He is life size and he is incredibly cute. I've already caught a couple of videos and I couldn't be more excited to get this guy out of the box. Now, unfortunately, when he went up for pre order, I was umming and ahhing. I hadn't quite decided whether I wanted to take the plunge into the statue realm and I never ordered him until I started seeing the videos and then I decided, of course, that I had to have him. I placed my order and it was a little bit later in the queue. I have to say a huge thank you to my buddy Adam for hooking me up with his copy, his order, and switching places with me in order to allow me to review it a little bit sooner. So show Adam some love down in the comments below because without him and his switching places with me, this review wouldn't be possible. Now if you do want to pick up your very own one-to-one -one scale, The Child, it is still up for pre-order right now with Sideshow Collectibles. I have of course popped the link in the description below if you'd like to go ahead and check them out. They do ship worldwide, so no matter where you are in the globe, you can pick up your very own child. Now also, while you are down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. Also check out the join button for Justin's Collection Plus to get early access to some videos as well as a bunch more perks. Check it out right next to the subscribe button. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the collection room because this box is enormous and do the unboxing. Now here of course we have the box art for the child himself. Star Wars logo and the child on the front with the sideshow life-size symbol down the bottom. This happens to be the more boring of the packaging options. Underneath this slipcover you would have seen in the previous clip is an even more exciting piece of box art. And of course, starting off with the top, you can see the Mandalorian logo. Flipping it down though, this happens to be the front of the box here. You do have the child and Mando. On one side, we do have the child on that sort of water slash forest world, playing with some other kids. Then of course, on this side, my all time favorite. It's a classic. It's that scene from season one with the Mando reaching out and the child sitting in his hover pram. Interesting to note, this bounty hunter in the concept art looks an awful lot like Forlom. I don't know why they've done that, but you can clearly see his face there. And of course, on the back, another piece of box artwork with Mando and the child walking down a ravine there. Really awesome artwork, honestly. Some of that stuff I'd like to have on my wall someday. Maybe Sideshow will do an art print. We'll have to wait and see. Now, of course, we do have this little slip. Greetings, guild member, and congratulations on acquiring the asset. Show us how the child fits in your life. Share some pics of the child on your socials. Of course, I may be doing that on my Instagram, so definitely go ahead and check that out. A link for that is in the description below. This is going to be a bit of a non-trivial task. I've already taken the liberty of snipping the tape around the entire thing because I didn't really want to contend with a bunch of tape on camera. I haven't taken a peek though, so I don't as of yet know what the figure himself looks like. And there he is in his plastic prison. He does, of course, come with a couple of accessories, but we'll take a look at those in a second. Let's get the child himself out here. He's covered in about three million of these little desiccant bags, but there he is. And I have to say, at first glance, this guy oozes cuteness. He looks absolutely adorable. And I'm really impressed so far with the realism. What we are going to do now though is get the base and the shift knob out here and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with the sideshow version of the child. Being a statue, he doesn't really come with a hell of a lot of stuff. That's perfectly fine. This is more than actually what I'd personally expect from a statue style piece because of course we do get the shift knob. We may as well take a look at it first. It's a fairly basic piece. Would I have liked for this to have been made out of metal? Absolutely, that would have been fantastic. But no, it's just a really light hollow plastic piece. You can see a very visible magnet. At the very least, I think the magnet should have been in this side and then actually had a threaded hole to make it look nice and authentic. This is a very fun 
functional piece in the fact that when it's in the hand you can't really tell, but it's not as authentic as I personally would like compared to the child which looks absolutely fantastic and super authentic to the show itself. It does have a nice metallic finish and the blue is painted very nicely. That's not the issue, it's just the overall form factor of the entire thing. Honestly, I think they could have done a little bit better, but the display base is beautiful. Not of course talking about this side, although it is very nicely done in a gunmetal with some weathering here and there, and of course one single post for the child himself. It is extremely heavy, so you can be darn sure this thing won't be falling off your shelf. I am talking about, of course, this piece of artwork on the underside here. This is gorgeous. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if someone prints a custom version of this to put on the top to replace this panel up here. That's a little bit boring compared to this. This is absolutely stunning. I love this piece of artwork. Of course, it's the iconic scene from that episode, but it's done in this really sort of simplistic orange, yellow, white, and black color scheme. It just pops. I would honestly love to have something like this printed out and hung up on the wall because that's how much I'm liking that artwork. What we are going to do now though is get of course the child himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have the child himself standing straight up and down the light box. No crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Not that he could really do anything anyway because spoiler alert, this guy is a statue, he's a static piece, he has no articulation except for a tiny little bit of swivel in the head itself. That bothered me initially, that's why I didn't place the order. I was waiting for the eventual Hot Toys one, which of course did end up getting announced. That one has articulation, it's got interchangeable ears. I definitely am going to be picking up that one as well and doing a comparison, but I was just planning on picking up that child as my only one. I know a lot of people, there is a raging debate who prefer the Sideshow one. You'll have to let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm keen to get a feel as to whether people are going to be going for the Hot Toys one or the Sideshow one or waiting for something else. Who knows, someone else might come out and make an even better version of the child. Why did you now decide to pick this one up, Justin? Well, because of the lineage. It ties back to Legacy FX, the company that actually created the child for the Mandalorian show. You can't get any more authentic than that, and being a proper authentic piece kind of trumped the lack of articulation, at least for me personally. There is another thing. He's looking really fantastic just standing here, and I think that's down to one big thing. The actual robe itself is sitting up a lot higher. There's a bunch of wires on the inside. There's an inner ring, which you'll see as well in just a second. Make sure you hike that up all the way. In the show, you don't see an enormous long child neck. It looks a little bit goofy. You have to have the collar really nice up and high because that's how it is in the show. He looks kind of swaddled and engulfed by his little robe there. And so far in every single other video that I've seen, they've got the robe pulled all the way down at the front and you can see this really long gaudy neck. Don't really like the way that looks, but luckily you can fix it with a little bit of outfit futzing. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have the child himself up close and personal and I have to say this thing looks absolutely fantastic. It's everything I was hoping it was going to be and more. Let's address the elephant in the room first and I'm of course talking about the rosiness in the cheeks, the mouth, the nose and the ears. Yes, it is rather strong in person but I think they sort of overcompensated with the coloration so it pops on camera. They of course do this with movie props because the camera tends to wash out details here and there. For those of you who don't know, Darth Vader's helmet wasn't entirely black. There were actually grey sections because otherwise you wouldn't have been able to see that in the actual film itself. Same thing with the child here. They've overcompensated with some red tones to give it a little bit more life. Trust me, if it wasn't there, it would have stood out equally as much as it being there, in my personal opinion. I'd much rather be able to correct it in post, in pictures, than have to add an additional redness to the skin itself. You do get used to it after seeing it in a couple of minutes. Trust me, it's not all that bad. Now, the robes themselves, as I was talking about, a lot of people have them pulled all the way down like that. 
it's not how he looks in the show. The robes are always up here and swaddling him. In my opinion, he looks far and away better with the robes up like that. You can, of course, move them around. This inner section is actually separate, so you can pull that up to cover the neck, then pull up this section here, which is actually full of wires. There are a bunch of wires running along the inside there, so technically you can pose it and move it around. Maybe you want it blowing off to one side. You can unbutton that and definitely make it happen, as you can see right there. It's a nice touch, something they didn't have to do, but I really appreciate that they did. Now, talking about the head again for just a moment, you can see it's entirely covered in this super fine white fuzzy hair that's been individually hand-punched, just like in the show. It looks fantastic. It's pretty much the most authentic process you can get to get it as accurate as possible, which I really appreciate them going to that level of detail in getting it just right. It's something that you kind of wouldn't have noticed otherwise, but I'm glad they've done it just to set it over the top there. The eyes themselves, they have a really nice gloss effect to them, and there's a ton of detail on the inside. You can see the irises and the pupil there. It's just outstanding the amount of detail that are in those big bulbous eyes. Some of the promo pics that came out a little bit later, people were saying the eyes were slightly too small. Tell me, taking a look at that guy in front of you right there, does that look too small to you? Because to me, it definitely doesn't. Moving down to the robes themselves, you can see they're soiled, they're completely filthy, they're dirty and nasty. That's perfect. They look outstanding. You can see tattered and frayed edges here and there. And of course, a bunch of different colours. There's a lighter sort of look to the outside, darker down the centre, and of course up the top here with this fleecy sort of section. That also carries down to the little wrist sections, and there's an even an inner piece as well on the inside to give just an added layer of protection to the child. We of course don't want him getting cold. Moving down to the hands themselves, there is a ton of detail just in these hands alone. You can see wrinkles, you can see skin texture, and of course the nails are painted with a nice high gloss. This entire thing is just chock full of detail. No matter how many times you look at him, first of all you're probably going to remark at how cute he is, and then you're going to notice even more detail that you might have missed the first time around. Even on his feet, I don't think we've actually ever seen the child's feet in the show just yet, but you can see little liver spots and wrinkles and bits and pieces. It's a little bit lighter on the bottom with a little bit of a pink hue. That's really darn awesome. I'm so glad that they went to the effort of giving us proper detailed feet. It could have just been a solid block underneath and we would have been none the wiser because of course, as I said, we haven't actually seen the feet themselves yet. Now in order to install him in the display base, we do have one single porthole. You literally just plug him in. It's as straightforward as that. Now there have been videos that have undressed the child on camera. I won't be doing that, but if that's something you'd like to see, I'm sure you can find a couple of other reviews on YouTube. The only other thing that I want to touch on is the head articulation. As you can see, the head can move side to side. It's not a hell of a lot, it's just a swivel. He can't go forward and back, which is a little bit frustrating because he's perpetually looking up. It's more of that angle right there. I wish you could tilt it down a little bit in case you have him on a higher shelf. But nevertheless, that's a very minor thing to complain about on an otherwise very fantastic piece. Now, just quickly before we move on, I wanted to show you how to attach the shift knob to the child's hand. It's very simple. It's magnetic. It pops in there. It's a very strong and positive fit, which means it's not going to go rolling out if you do happen to bump the display case that the child is displayed atop of. It's a very basic thing, as I said, but it works really well. Now, of course, for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, just to give you an idea of how big this guy actually is, he's the Hot Toys Mando. You can see the child himself is a little bit taller, but most of the actual size comes in the width because, of course, this is an actual life-size thing. It's not that tall, but it is rather wide, which is realistic. It's supposed to be a teeny tiny little baby version of Yoda's species, so this works perfectly fine for me. You can also see how much wider he is than Mando on the head because of the big honking ears. This guy just oozes cuteness, and I love it. Just wrapping up on the Sideshow Collectibles slash Legacy Effects version of the one-to-one -one scale child. 
This guy was a bit of a mixed bag for me when he was announced. He looked really good, but it was from Sideshow, a kind of unproven company for me personally. I haven't owned a bunch of their statue products, so I didn't have that confidence that I have, say, with Hot Toys. I own a bunch of their stuff, so I kind of know what to expect. Also, he wasn't poseable, he doesn't have any articulation whatsoever, he doesn't come with the ability to change the expression or the ears or anything like that that the Hot Toys one can do. So as I said, a bit of a mixed bag. Thank goodness I went ahead and picked this guy up. All of that stuff just melts away when you see him. He is that darn adorable and realistic. He has this sort of skin translucency that I really don't know how to describe other than the fact that he was very hard to light throughout the course of this video because he just absorbs it and you can see this translucency. It looks super realistic. The eyes just pop. There is so much detail on an otherwise very basic piece that just brings it to life and thank goodness legacy effects were involved because this thing looks pretty much as faithful to the show as you can get. I am really curious as to how Hot Toys is going to compete with this in the looks department. If you don't really care so much about looks but you want the posability and the ability to switch out the ears, then maybe that one's already a win. But as I said, I personally am more a fan of this looking realistic than having those extra little bits and pieces, so we'll see. When the Hot Toys one comes out, I will be doing a comparison to see what they're like side by side. Now if you'd like to pick up your very own child, he is up for pre-order right now with Sideshow Collectibles. A link for that is of course in the description below. They ship worldwide, so no matter where you are in the galaxy, you can have this guy shipped out to your doorstep. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.